Since 1811, when a journeyman in the Canadian Rocky Mountains first recorded his encounter with a Bigfoot-like creature, there has been a long history of reliable sightings of these beings throughout the world. But it is the existence of such a creature within the greater New York metropolitan area's Harriman State Park that now raises so many urgent questions and dramatically challenges so many age-old assumptions. And it is this videotape footage of a remarkable being, now universally referred to as Harry Manicus, that was taken last summer by two visitors to the park that lies at the very centre of it all. Well, when I first heard about what was going on in the park, I was shocked and then elated because it made me say, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. And all my other documentary work has been nothing but practice for this. And whether this has something to do with my family or it's just my greatest piece of work or something supernatural is really going on, I have to find out exactly what is the meaning of this. My great-grandfather, Edward Harriman, the world-renowned financier and philanthropist, is who the park was named after. And my grandfather, Avril Harriman, set up a trust for me. And in a sense, he's the silent producer of all my works. They're both long gone, but I know that if they were here today, they'd both say, Seth, get the cameras and let's go. And I know that as a Harriman, that this will be my legacy. Jerry Rosenman, who lives in this building behind me, was one of the visitors to the park that day and caught Harmonicus on tape. He's graciously agreed to be in the documentary, so why don't we go in and see what he's got to say. Seth, come with me. I've got to show you something you're going to love. Babies should be about ready. Come close. Ouch. Get a load of these. Oh my god, these cookies! They, they look like Harimannicus! Exactly. I'm gonna call them Harimannicans. I just think kids are gonna go nuts for these. I'm looking at a variety of really attractive in-store shelf options. Plus, you know, they're very educational. I am basically the most normal guy you'll ever meet. I mean, I've got my wife and kids, I've got my public relations business, I've got my reptiles. You know, I'm your typical family man. So, like, what is it about you that led you to such a remarkable fate as to come face to face with Harimannicus? Well, I've been asking myself that very question every day, Seth, and I can only guess. But perhaps it's that, given my vast public relations background, I'm uniquely qualified to tell Harimannicus' story for him and be his liaison to the public. I think the more intriguing question, the more appropriate question is, did he come to me? That's really odd, because as a Harriman, I feel the same way. Let's talk about that day. Uh, you were in the park, and you were searching for snakes? That's right. I'm an avid amateur herpetologist, and I was with my friend, Sasha Burton. You know Sasha Burton? Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of his books. Um, can you tell me a little bit about him personally? Well, sure. Um, Sasha, as you know, he's, he's a, um, a gifted, uh, successful science fiction writer. Uh, but that's not the whole story, sadly. Um, my friend Sasha's had more than his share of uh, mental health problems. But to Sasha's credit, I, he's using sports as a way of working through these difficulties. And I think to a large extent, he's conquered his personal demons. From a scientific point of view, the sightings of Harry Manicus could not be more timely. For only recently, British scientists at Oxford University's Institute of Molecular Medicine were tasked with identifying a single hair believed to be taken from a yeti in the kingdom of Bhutan. The molecular biologist's astonishing discovery? A strand of mystery DNA they were unable to identify, thus irrefutably proving the actual physical existence of an unexplained creature by way of the molecular genetic code. Now tell me more about that remarkable day. Sasha and I were in the park. We were in this overgrown field by not really a lagoon, but a small body of water that was 
um, just on the edge of the woods? I'm not exactly sure who heard it first. Um, it's possible we heard it at the same instant, but this noise that had a lot of mass behind it just seized both of our attention. So I immediately looked up to see what it was. And when I did, I saw Sasha was kind of freaked out by it too. I just knew I had this sense that this was not something normal. And through the woods I saw, or I thought I saw movement, but I wasn't entirely sure that I wasn't hallucinating because that just happens to me naturally from time to time. And then what happened? Well, by now it's safe to say I'm hysterical. I'm screaming at Sasha, get the camera, get the video camera, because it was such an incredible miracle that we happen to have it. I picked up the camera, I ran right at it as fast as I could, you know, convinced that if I kept my head down, kept going forward, I was bound to get a picture of it, which I did. And there it was. Uh, it was just uh, certainly a mammal, definitely a biped primate with striking cranial development. That's what I noticed immediately. Um, it was covered in kind of a coarse, really a matted fur. It was focused, it was aware, it was alert. There was this just keen intelligence he sensed. And I knew instantly that what we were looking at could only possibly be Haramanicus. I'll never, ever forget what we saw in the park that day. And I know that what we saw was Haramanicus. Never before have two or more completely objective individuals jointly eyewitnessed a Bigfoot-like creature so near to the epicenter of the tri-state area surrounding New York City. And never before has there been more of an imperative to provide timely, meaningful answers to explain once and for all what these enigmatic creatures truly are. This is New York's Hudson University, where Professor Edward Nathan an expert in inchoate phenomenon has gone over our mountain of evidence and has agreed to speak with us for a nominal honorarium. So let's go and see what he has to say. About your case, Haramanicus. My file. Spent quite a bit of time studying this, Seth. Uh, you're Sasha Burton. Do you know that he's got significant credibility problems? I found that he spent a good deal of his life in mental institutions. In addition, he's been in at least three, possibly five, substance abuse programs. His credibility is something I'd spend some time questioning. In addition, I've managed to digitally enhance and enlarge the photographs from your tape. This is a rock. These are leaves. This is your monster, and this is your monster's fanny pack. Haramanicus is also wearing a fanny pack in this shot. Haramanicus appears to be wearing a fanny pack in every photo that I have studied. But can you really be- I'm absolutely certain. Haramanicus is a hoax. Case closed. Throughout human history, it has long been the folly of the few to deceive the many. And while there is no end in sight to these mendacious endeavors, in no way does it dim the brilliant, radiant light of genuine discoveries. Is Harry Manicus real? Has mankind made contact with the authentically unknown? These are the wrenching questions we must ask and answer in order to ultimately behold the truth. So I contacted Jerry Roseman that afternoon and shared with him my grave concerns after meeting with Professor Nathan and listening to his extreme accusations. But Mr. Roseman strenuously assured me that the tape is genuine and invited me to sit down with him and Sasha Burton later that afternoon. I eagerly accepted his offer. Sasha, Dr. Nathan questioned your credibility. He informed me that you've been in and out of mental institutions your whole life. Is this true? Look, he's not on trial here, okay? And if you and, and, and this professor, frankly, have issues with Sasha because he's mentally ill, or because he's Jewish, or because he's gay, I'm or gay. then those are your issues. And, and, and that's the baggage you take with you. I don't want any part of a bigoted agenda. Okay, 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 that's fine. But just take a look at these. Professor Nathan gave me these enhanced images from your video actually showing Haramanic is wearing a fanny pack. Wow. This is remarkable. Um, 
this is proof right here that Aromaticus is actually intelligent enough to properly use a, a semi-sophisticated carrying device. I mean, this is a breakthrough. He, he's 110 percent right. I, you know, to me, this photo raises incredibly important questions. I mean, how did he get the fanny pack? Did someone leave it there? You know, he picked it up and he decided to use it, or maybe he made it himself. How did Harrimanicus come to figure out how to use a fanny pack? And what's in it? Okay, because if he's carrying it around with him like this, you can bet that whatever is in there is pretty important to him. I, I think we've got to start taking into account the, the incredible intelligence of this creature, okay? And I don't think that's being taken into account here. Seth, just stop for a second and think about it, okay? If we follow Professor Nathan's logic to its reasonable conclusion, then if we found the body of a space alien and that alien wasn't wearing a wristwatch, we'd be forced to conclude that that alien couldn't tell time. And clearly, any alien who's intelligent enough to get to Earth can tell time. He's totally right. He's, a, he's absolutely right here. I mean, maybe it just didn't occur to the professor how truly intelligent this being we're dealing with is. Did you run that theory by him? As a matter of fact, no, I didn't, I didn't ask. Well, and frankly, that explains it to me. Because if you did, I think you'd find that at the end of the day, the professor, Sasha, and myself are on exactly the same side of the issue here. OK? And, and as far as I'm concerned, you, me, Sasha, and this professor, Nathan, we're all, we're all players. And we're playing hard on the same team. Science and emerging realities have long made strange bedfellows. For what one embraces, the other often rejects. But together, these forces continually inch forward to define the world we live in. Harrimanicus is a fine example of this struggle. For if ever there's an emerging reality that drastically defies mankind's preconceptions, it is now. And if ever science has lagged behind genuine human experience and failed to provide adequate answers, so too it is now, in the case of Harrimanicus which all leaves us in a place so near and yet so far from where we started. Personally, I'm more convinced of the existence of Harrimanicus than ever. But as of right now, the only thing we can be absolutely sure of is that the truth behind this incredible phenomenon is more of an electrifying mystery than ever. How would you uh, assume it communicates? Well, we think that, why don't you tell them the theory about the, uh, you know, the microwaves. Listen, like I said, they laughed at Bob Dylan. Let him laugh. Let him laugh. The interesting thing about this animal, though, that they're theorizing, though, is that it wind pollinates, which is very unusual for mammals. What if this is just a regular homo sapien dressed up trying to fool people? It's impossible. Look at this. What, what, <laughs> what wearing a fanny pack? It's ridiculous. Who would be so stupid? Show me the scene. Yeah, Show me the scene please. in the costume. 